Hello everyone. I'm Anil Kumar here in front of you to teach you a small topic. Uh, it's like a continuation to my earlier video where I talked about the, the autotrophic nutrition in plants. But here in today's class, we are going to discuss about heterotrophic nutrition in plants. Yes, you heard it right. We are going to discuss about heterotrophic nutrition in plants. Hetero means there are two meanings for hetero. Many or other. Trophic means production. So the living organism which depend on the other living organisms for foods are called as heterotrophic organism. But in the earlier video we have already discussed that plants are autotrophic in nature, they can produce their own food. But how can they depend on the other living organisms for food? Does all the plants depend on the other living organisms for food? No. There are few plants which depend on other living organisms for food. And what makes them to depend on the other living organisms? It is due to the lack of chlorophyll. Some plants are depending on the other living organisms for food, other plants for food. And the other plants, they are depending on the other uh, living organisms as they are growing in nitrogen deficient soil and as they need nitrogen for their survival if they want to survive they need nitrogen so they have come up with this plan of trapping the insects killing them and drawing the nutrients out of them for their livelihood so in this lesson we are going to discuss about the such type of uh, vampire like plant yeah they are like vampires this is not expected with plants but we have such plants as well so firstly you can look at this picture insectivorous plant these plants can also be called as carnivorous plants as they are eating the flesh as they are depend on the animal for food they are called as insectivorous plants or carnivorous plants. Most probably they eat insects, but few also catch some lizards and frogs as well. But most probably they depend on insects. Yes. As I have just now told you, why? Why? What made them to depend on the insects? Why can't they be uh, atotrophic just like uh, the rest of the plants, the normal plants? Means it is because they growing nitrogen deficient soil and nitrogen is very much necessary for their survival so what do they do what is the option that they have they have only option that is to trap the insects which are rich in nitrogen yes uh, their body consists of protein and proteins are made up of amino acids and amino acids is the name itself suggests amino is nitrogen so they have nitrogen in them so that nitrogen can be used up by these insectivorous plants and that nitrogen can be used up for the survival of these plants. Yes. What are the examples of these insectivorous plants? Venus flytrap is one example, Lipensis is one example, Eustupilaria is another example, uh, bladder worm. All these are examples of uh, the insectivorous plants. Okay, if you haven't seen them, don't worry, these uh, insectivorous plants, they, they can be found near the swamps, near the water bodies, uh, which are wet, or near the coastal areas also they are found. And most probably, these, luckily or unluckily, uh, you should decide it, uh, they are found in North America, Australia, and some tropical regions, not all the regions. Most of them are not found in the southern India. Especially, I don't know about the northern India, but mostly they are found in the northern America, Australia, and some parts of the tropical region as well. These are called an insectivorous plant. You can look at this picture. These are called as bladder worms. Okay. So, through this funnel like structure, the insect, once the insect settles on the uh, bladder, this is called as a bladder the insect is pushed into the bladder 
and then the enzymes that are present inside the bladder will digest that insects. It is a one way. The insects only can go inside. Once the insects have gone inside, it cannot pop out. It is not possible because of the cells that are facing towards the inside. The fine or cell-like structures that are facing inside will not let the insect to pop up, to come up. Yes, this is another way in which the uh, insects are caught up and this is uh, uh, the Venus flytrap. Uh, the leaf will be open like this and due to the beauty of the uh, leaf or the adaptive structure, the insect gets attracted to it, it comes and settles on it and as soon as an insect comes and settles on it, the leaf gets closed all of a sudden and the insect is trapped inside. It is then digested and the nitrogenous substances are, uh, nitrogenous uh, uh, materials are absorbed by the plant. Yeah, this is very interesting. And uh, the next type of nutrition that we are going to talk about is parapsychic nutrition. Parapsychic nutrition. Parapsychic means the living organisms which are dependent on which are dependent on the other living organisms either for food or for shelter or for food. Sometimes for food, they are dependent on the other living organisms for food or shelter or sometimes most of the time for food. Then what makes this plant to survive on the other living organisms? The best example for the parasite plant is Kuskuta, C-U-S-C-U-T-A. Kuskuta. Some people pronounce it as uh, Kuskuta, some people pronounce it as Kaskuta. Kaskuta. But I pronounce it as Kuskuta, I don't find any problem with that. Uh, and it belongs to a family called as Morning Glory. Morning Glory. It doesn't have chlorophyll. It doesn't have chlorophyll. Its stem is either in white color or yellowish color or brownish color. Uh, sometimes reddish in color, different color, uh, straw color, different colors of a stem can be seen. And uh, once it uh, takes germination, it creeps on to the adjacent plant. It creeps on to the adjacent plant. And once it creeps on to the adjacent plant, it detaches itself from the ground and it starts cloning the plant, surrounding trees and plants. Then what does it do? It releases some root-like structures into the host plant. It releases some root-like structures into the host plant, which are called as hostoria. Which are called as hostoria. These hostoria, they penetrate into the xylem and phloem, that is the conductive tissue of the host plant, and they draw the nutrients, they take the nutrients, and this plant flourishes, it increases. It expands in all the directions possible. So, in, in this uh, relationship, do you think that both the plants are benefited? No. Only the kuskuta is benefited. The other plant is not benefited. So, that is the reason why this type of relationship is called as parasitic relationship. And this plant is a parasite. Kuskuta, which is also known as Nadal, which belongs to a family called as Morning Glory or Convalvulaceae. Morning Glory or Convalvulaceae, it uh, belongs to. Hope I am clear to you. So, these are some interesting plants that we have on the earth. Maybe we may not uh, have seen these, but still they exist. Some are very deadly, they can eat insects and these are also equally dangerous, they can harm the other productive plants as well. Thank you for watching my video, if you have any suggestions, your suggestions are welcome. Thank you for being here, with this I would like to end of today's session. Thank you.